Okay, it's all good. Uh, my name is Lothar Larose. I'm from the University of Kent, and I'm going to be talking about the research I've been working on among Sophie Calabar and Caliber and Shepard Ma regarding improving the performance of ASD based interpreters. So, first of all, to briefly describe the ecosystem we're working with that many of you are already familiar with, which is Truffle and Graal. Truffle is a DSL that can be used to implement an interpreter in any language through an abstract syntax tree or AST. And Graal VM is a hotspot place, Java VM that's made to work alongside Truffle. So, the idea is that you implement one Truffle interpreter, and through Graal's partial evaluation system, you get just in time compilation that yields peak performance. That's pretty much state of the art, as we'll see in a bit. And it's been the subject of a lot of attention these last few years because it's quite flexible, it's open source, has plenty of tooling. And there are implementations for very popular languages like Ruby, overall Python, or JavaScript as well, which, as we can see here, are very well performing when it comes to uh, the just in time compilation performance. So if you consider Node.js to be state of the art because of all the attention it's received over the past few years due to the popularity of JavaScript and in the highly complex uh, system, we can see that Truffle Ruby or JS are very not far behind from it. So the performance is very good in that regard. But if you remove the JIT compiler and focus entirely on the interpreter, this time comparing it to Node.js run without a JIT, we can see that the performance is much further than the state of the art. That a Graal Python is up to uh, on average 10 times slower than C Python, which is already the Torah system. So clearly, interpreters haven't received as much attention in that regard than actually getting good peak performance, which makes sense because most people are interested in uh, getting more and better performance on longer running applications where you actually have time to warm up. And so you rely more on the JIT than the interpreter. But before you can actually get to that phase, you need to go through the warm up, which is always going to rely on the interpreter to know which code needs to be executed to get better performance. So the interpreter is always going to be needed throughout the startup. And this compile code can still be de-optimized later, and then control transfer back to the interpreter for it to try to compile to a better, more efficient, specialized version. So the interpreter can still be relied upon even for longer running applications. And there are also some cases where we may not even want to rely on JIT in the first place because of issues arising from their complexity. So for instance, they're non-predictable due to them being fairly complex black boxes. They have a very large size, which means they can't be used on embedded systems most of the time. And there's also security issues uh, arising from using them. A good example of the Microsoft Edge using a super duper secure mode, a very good name, that simply just disables the AJ compilation because they found out that that removes roughly half the bugs that all came from the JIT engine. So we don't necessarily want to get rid of JIT, but there are cases where we may not want to rely on them. And even if we are relying on JIT, the interpreter is still going to need to perform well. So how can we actually help uh, interpreters perform better in that regard? And our idea, Drupal based AST interpreters, is super nodes. So merging AST nodes together, roughly based on the idea of super instructions, which is famous, fairly well known, concatenating micro instructions together, but this time adapted to AST interpreters. So if you have this instruction, which is a local variable y being assessed, assign the value, sorry, of x squared, it's going to look like something like this in the AST. So a variable write node that's going to write the variable y, and the value that's going to be assigned to it is uh, the multiplication through a multiplication primitive of two variable reads of x. So each node has its own behavior encapsulated in a virtual method uh, called execute in this context, and it looks roughly like this for all of our nodes. So the variable write is going to um, access the frame and set um, the value of y at its index to the value of the children node. And what the children node are going to do is multiply one read of x, getting it from the frame at the index of it, uh, to another one. So right off the bat, uh, we have to read from x twice. So there's some repetition there that can be avoided. And our idea was, what if we combine all of these nodes together into a single node with the exact same behavior? So in this context, the super node generated from this AST would look like this. So just we get the value of x in the same way the variable read, we store it in the local variable, and then we just assign it to the frame at the index of y. So we have the exact same behavior there, we're using the same code, and we get the exact same result out of it because it's essentially the same behavior. 
but we say it's a lot of performance, most notably on removing redundant guards. Because in this context, so the interpreters, uh, they have to do behavioral checks to see if their input is uh, matches a certain criteria. So for example, in this case, if you consider that X and Y are both double types and they are the full types for the sake of simplicity. Uh, whenever you want to write to the variable Y, you have to check if what you're writing actually is of type double. Um, when it comes to multiplying the two values together, you have to perform a kind of complicated check to see what the multiplication is specialized on, uh, from comparing a state to a specialization state and checking if the state is initialized uh, up to eight times in our implementation because there are many possible specializations. And until it finds the handle for multiplying two doubles together, uh, it actually has to get to it. And then for both the variable reads, you have to check if X is indeed a double. And if it is, then you don't need to actually be optimized and there we go and specialize it on another type. Uh, so that's quite a lot of behavioral checks for just this simple operation. And if we compare it to what it looks like in the supernova we generated, instead we just check if X is a double, if Y is a double, and if it is, we can just execute it. So there are a lot less um, checks that need to be performed to see if uh, the inputs have the correct value. So we save some performance that way, but uh, much like by super instructions, reduce dispatch overhead. We also save time on reducing node dispatch overhead because instead of relying on four nodes, uh, we only have one. So we don't have to spend as much time accessing the uh, execute virtual methods I mentioned earlier to get the behavior of each node because we only have to do it once and just access all of the behavior, behavior at once and just execute it from there. So more compact memory as well, less time spending garbage collections, rolling less objects, and hopefully helping mitigate some common ASD interpreter issues like cache unfriendliness and inefficient memory management. So when it comes to how it's actually implemented, uh, our super nodes are special casing check in the parser, which is to say, in the parser, we have some code that checks if the ASD has a certain shape that can be replaced with one of the super nodes that we've uh, implemented. So for example, when writing to a variable in the ASD, for the code y or x times x that we've been working on uh, since the start, we can see if the operation that's been written to it, if it has an operator that's a multiplication, if both the receiver and the operand are local variable reads, if they are the exact same variable, and if that's the case, then we have a y equals x times x situation, and we can just replace the ASD by a supernode. So essentially, um, the same behavior, but more specialized. And that's a bit, that adds a lot of uh, redundant code, and we have a more truffleized way of implementing it through alignment specializations, which um, specialize nodes depending on uh, whether or not they match guards, which do perform checks to see if the input has a certain uh, behavior. So, for example, for a right double, we can check if uh, the input is of type double, and if it is, we just write it to the frame, and the node can be specialized. Uh, on a double type, but we can write our own specialization that essentially performs the same check, says, okay, are we working with a double? And does the ASD have the shape that we want uh, through this is square assignment uh, operation? And uh, if it does, then we can just replace it with a super node and then just execute it. And from now on, we're no longer working with a local variable right, but a more specialized local variable square to local which performs the uh, y equals x of x behavior. So we tried to investigate um, what performance could be gained from several types of super nodes. So we investigated what happens when we reduce the size of the ASD, as mentioned earlier, from having to rely on less nodes to get the same behavior. So we threw out, for example, uh, this code. So put the method func uh, on an object, giving you the values one and two. Uh, in our context, that's going to be a message send node, which is going to send a message. And what the code of that essentially looks like is uh, it evaluates the argument, which is calling the execute generate on all the argument nodes that's fed to it. And then it just dispatches them to a dispatch node and just uh, performs a message send in this way. Uh, so in this context, the three arguments would be uh, OBJ and one and two. An object is going to be a local argument read node to actually access its value, which looks like this. 
uh, all the behavior of a local argument we know is essentially just getting the frame, getting the arguments, and getting the argument on the correct index. It just returns that. So our idea was just to inline the first argument whenever there's a message sent that has this shape, instead of relying on an extra local argument read node. So for example, in this case with three arguments, we generate a super node called ternary arc send node, which has this behavior. So essentially, all it does is the first argument, instead of it being a specific node, uh, we call execute generic on, which would be a local argument read. We just inline its contents into it. And so we just get a frame, get arguments, getting the correct index. And for the other two arguments, we just call execute generic as usual, and then we dispatch in the same manner. So what this does is that we've generated super node specialized uh, on this exact dispatch but it has to rely on one less node that it would if we were relying on a generic message send node because else we would need to use a local argument read node instead of inlining it into the actual more specialized message set and as a side note we also generated some form binary binary but it's already send node so encapsulating most dispatches so one less node for each dispatch in this manner and uh, our results relying on truffle sum so truffle based small market implementation we use uh, for experiments, we gain up to uh, minus 11% when it comes to performance, with a run minus 2% performance gain on average. So, if we look at how, how much the ASD is reduced, it's around between 2 to 5% for most benchmarks. But there's um, no linear correlation between actually reducing the size of the ASD and the actual speed up. So, for example, it's minus 2% for balance, it could be just minus 1% for double, so despite it having less ASD. But having its safety reduced by more. Um, and it sh should be noted that a garbage collection doesn't actually trigger in any of these benchmarks, except JSON, which doesn't actually gain performance. It loses 1%, which is most likely just due to noise due to the nature of benchmarking. So even though its ASD had been reduced by quite a bit, um, it's not actually gaining performance through the super node. So we can assume that the performance gain that we get in this context comes from reducing the dispatch overhead, as we described earlier. Uh, we've also tried um, specializing in common operations like incrementing a local variable, so for example, the x equals x plus one operation. And this yields very good performance in uh, loop-based micro benchmarks, which makes sense because that's a common way of incrementing a loop index, a loop variable as you iterate through it, to the one iteration, then you increase the index and you continue classic loop, just uh, incrementing the value. And so if we generate a super node that encapsulates this behavior, um, this yields very good performance uh, on these specific benchmarks. We've also tried a uh, super node specialized on string operations. And for example, in JSON in this context, through just operating a super node that encapsulates the behavior of checking if a local variable or local field uh, is equal to a string, so in this manner, we get uh, minus 11% through just this simple change because it relies on it heavily to actually check what the next character uh, is in the JSON that it's working with. So overall, uh, with 20 super nodes, we get decent below uh, initial results, around 11% on JSON, 7% on page rank, um, up to 42% on field loop, as we've seen. Uh, it should be mentioned that um, we were looking for easy wins for this early stage, so just trying to implement super nodes that um, yield good performance with minimal effort, ideally in several benchmarks. And also that not all these benchmarks receive equal amounts of attention. For example, JSON only has one super node tailored to it, which is the string manipulation one that I mentioned earlier, the uh, character for the string, and Mendelbrot um, at two. So not all benchmarks receive the same amount of attention, and we were just trying to see what we could get through just uh, implementing various super nodes, but limiting the amount that we actually create. Because why we limit ourselves to 20 as opposed to encapsulating every possible subtree is that the memory overhead of managing a million super nodes would be clearly unmanageable. And we don't want to just create too many in this context. But uh, one idea we had to circumvent uh, that issue and just encapsulating more behavior within a single supernode would be to consider supernodes as state machines. So, for example, if we have a code base uh, where we have these four instructions on the left, so y equals x times x, 
another one is x times x plus x, and all four are fairly similar. So our intuition was like, um, why couldn't we just implement them uh, into a single supernova? So what this looks like is, uh, and this variable square state machine, is just reading the value of x and then checking the supernova's type. So if we say it's a supernova type one, we just do an uh, x times x, as mentioned, of type two, x times x plus x, et cetera, for type three and four. And so what we've done is through a single supernova encapsulating all four operations on the left. So obviously the downside is that the supernova is a bit slower because it actually has to check its type and find the correct handler uh, for its current operation. But we would have encapsulated a lot more operations with only a single supernova. So that would help regarding the memory of the end of the creating too many and having to deal with this. Not to mention that supernodes by design introduce some anti duplication into the system. Um, because if we look at our local variable square, node again y equals x times x, for its method that uh, actually writes to uh, a long to a to value, the way it multiplies both values is not multiplied exact. And if we look at the multiplication primitive, that's exactly what it does as well. Uh, if we just look at the right double, it relies on just a common multiplication, and same for the double operation. So that's normal because that's how they design. They just uh, duplicate this behavior. But as a rule of thumb, semantic duplication isn't exactly a good thing to have in your system due to it making them harder to maintain. Since if we ever modify the multiplication primitive, for example, and handle multiplication in a different way, then we'd actually have to modify it as well um, in our super node for, it, for them not to have different behaviors and so for there not to be bugs in our system. So we want um, to remove semantic duplication. Uh, and our idea we had for that was to you know, automatically generate all supernodes from the current semantics instead of just relying on um, the manual implementation as we currently do. So for example, we have three of nodes on the left that we want to turn into a supernode. And our intuition was that we could use Crawl's partial evaluation system, which is used to compile code uh, nodes to machine code. And then through this, we can grow our intermediate representation graph that should be easier to turn into supernode source code through a supernode source code generator that we will write. So through this, um, hopefully the partial evaluation system will alleviate some of the burden from having to implement that, but uh, we would still have to write a source code generator. Source code generation can be quite complex. Um, so possibly at first we wouldn't implement it by generating bytecode instead, which is a structured easier to manage, albeit less readable and harder to work with. Um, but we hope to actually automatically generate supernodes instead of relying on manual implementation as we currently do. So to summarize, um, the interpreter performance for truffle-based uh, interpreters is not state of the art as opposed to chip performance. And we hope to alleviate that through uh, implementing supernodes, so merging AST nodes together. Uh, we have promising preliminary results um, that we hope to actually get as well in a more real world truffle based implementation like World Python or Truffle Ruby. Um, and hopefully, get around the tentative guess would be around 15% on interpreter performance overall, given our initial results. But before we can actually uh, get to that, we need to focus on actually automatically generating supernodes to reduce the developer effort of having to actually do this manually and introducing semantic duplication into our system. Thank you.